Come to set us free, come to make us your own. Come to show the way to your people, your chosen. Open our lives to the light of your promise. Come to our hearts with healing, come to our minds with power. Come to us and bring us your light. You are light which shines in darkness, morning star which never sets. Open our eyes which only dimly see the truth which sets us free. Come to set us free, come to make us your own. Come to show the way to your people, your chosen. Open our lives to the light of your promise. Come to our hearts with healing. Come to our minds with power. Come to us and bring us your light. You are hope which brings us courage. You are strength which never fails. Open our minds to ways we do not know. But where? Your spirit grows. Come to set us free. Come to make us your own. Come to show the way to your people, your chosen. Open our lives to the light of your promise. Come to our hearts with healing. Come to our minds with power. Come to us and bring us your life. You are promise of salvation. You are God in human form. Bring to our world of emptiness and fear the word we long to hear. Come to set us free. Come to make us your own. Show the way to your people, your chosen. Open our lives to the light of your promise. Come to our hearts with healing. Come to our mind with power. Come to us and bring us your life. People of God, good morning. I'm welcoming you this morning on this fourth Sunday of Advent in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Light, grace, and peace be with you all. Amen. Thank you. 2,000 years ago, there was a, a girl. In my mind, I, I picture her in a room um, weaving. And all of a sudden, there appears a, an angel. And the angel says to the girl, you've been chosen among all women to be the mother of the Son of God. Now this girl's life was already planned out. She was, she was betrothed to a carpenter. Everything was planned. Everything was organized. And the angel basically tells her everything you've planned, everything you've organized, everything that you were anticipating has been changed. And the girl says, yes. And that yes changes the world. So this morning, as we come together, I invite you to direct your attention to our Advent reading. And the question that I have for you today is when God actually presents an opportunity to you, is your inclination to say yes or no? Are we inclined to say no because we're, we're too busy or too tired? We're too preoccupied with things that we consider far more important? Or do we say yes to being patient? to being tolerant, yes, to being helpful, 
yes to being generous. When God presents an opportunity to us, do we say yes or do we say no? I confess to you, Almighty God, to my brothers and my sisters too, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and words what I've done and what i failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And I ask Blessed Mary the Virgin, all the saints and the angels once more, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me unto the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. The Lord enter, He is King of glory. Let the Lord enter, He is King of glory. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness the world and those who dwell in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Let the Lord enter, he is King of glory. Ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may 
stand in his holy place. One whose hands are spotless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Let the Lord enter, he is King of glory. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures. The gospel about his son, descended from David, according to the flesh, but established as the Son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness. Through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom you also are, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. 
When I consider um, American history for the last hundred years, I think, from my mind, one of the most mysterious and enigmatic characters would have to be the wife of President John F. Kennedy. She has a very intriguing story. You probably, most of you know it. Um, she was one of the youngest first ladies ever in the history of our country. She was unique. There had never been anyone like her in the White House. She was with her husband when he died, and in the aftermath of his death, she became a sort of iconic figure, not only here in the United States, but abroad as well. Until the day she died, she was the, the focus of intense curiosity and interest. People were fascinated by her. And I think part of what fueled the fascination is that she never gave an interview and she never wrote a memoir. She had a very interesting story to tell and she never told it. So it was very surprising when about 17 years after her death, it was revealed that she had sat down with a, a historian, Arthur Schlesinger, and recorded hours and hours of an oral history in which she recounted the, the experience of being in the White House with her husband. Those tapes were made public, and I don't know if any of you had a chance to listen to them, but it was, it was sort of an otherworldly experience, you know, almost like this person was speaking from the grave, you know, telling us who she really was and what she really thought. It's such a compelling idea, isn't it? Imagine, imagine if we could, if we could have had tapes from George Washington or Abraham Lincoln Thomas Jefferson, not to hear their words filtered through a historian, but directly from them, what their intentions, their purpose, their ideas were. Imagine, imagine if we could, if we could manifest Abraham or Moses or the Virgin Mary. What would they say to us today about their journey, about their thoughts, about life today in 2022? Wouldn't it be fascinating if we could somehow manifest Mary right here, now? Let's try it. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And imagine... I am Mary, the mother of Jesus, the Son of God. I was born in Nazareth, a small village. My, my life there was simple and happy, like my mother's and her mother's before hers, sweet and difficult, joyful and painful, and filled with hope. Hope that the Messiah would come and save us. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more dying. Joseph and I often talked of such a life. He told me the prophecies of the Torah and the studies of the synagogue. I couldn't study the Torah or attend the synagogue because I was a woman and it was forbidden by Jewish law, but my mother and father had taught me the Psalms of King David and I prayed them constantly. My favorite was this. To do your will, my God, is all my delight. Behold, I come. Those words became my life. One night at prayer, I was greeted. I was filled with the presence of the Lord. I was greeted with an angel of the Lord, and he said, Mary, favored daughter of God, you will conceive and 
birth a son. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Mary, your cousin Elizabeth, who is too old to have a child, shall be pregnant. Mary, nothing is impossible for God. And I said, be it done to me as you say. I left my home in Nazareth to visit my cousin Elizabeth. Through 90 miles of desert and hills I traveled to see her, to embrace her, to share what had happened. And when I arrived, she already knew. She said, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. As me and Elizabeth held each other, I could feel the warmth of her arms, and I knew then, I knew that my God lived within me. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. It was a frightening time, a difficult time. What would I have done without my dear Joseph? He could have put me aside and washed his hands of me. I was pregnant and it wasn't his child, but he listened to God's voice and he said yes. Together we put our lives in God's hands. This was God's son. And Joseph and I knew that we were safe. I was almost ready to, to deliver, and we learned that we had to head to Bethlehem for the census. It was such a long way, but we had no choice. I was frightened. And when we reached Bethlehem, the town was filled with travelers, the smell and the noise and the pain. I held my son, my child. He was so beautiful, this child of God. And people came from the fields. The shepherds, rough and raw, invaded our manger nursery. Astrologers from the east came with strange gifts. People, the simple and the powerful, just wanted to see him. But not everyone was happy. In a dream, Joseph learned we must flee because King Herod was killing all the baby boys. So we fled to Egypt, and it was strange there. We were so homesick for our family, for our little town of Nazareth, and finally when Herod died, we were able to go home. Our life in Nazareth was the happiest times of my life. In the heat of the day, I would bring Jesus and Joseph cool drinks, and as they worked together, And in the cool of the night, we sang the psalms. I would begin to do your will, my God, and Jesus would finish. Is all my delight, behold, I come. And Jesus grew in age and in grace. I saw my son only a few times after his baptism in the Jordan. Crowds and controversy swirled around him, lifting him up and pulling him down. People loved him. People hated him while I only wanted to hold him. And I finally did. When his body was taken from the cross and placed in my waiting arms, behold, I come. And then he was taken away. I stayed with his disciples. I was with them at Pentecost when suddenly we were all filled with his spirit of love. And that spirit is with us, in us now, in each of us. The spirit of Jesus is alive, and I can hold Jesus whenever I want by holding any of you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We pray this morning for the men and women who carry the gospel message into the world. Those who bear the message of hope, faith, forgiveness, and love. We pray that God might sustain all ministers in the church with wisdom, with light, and with peace. We pray to the Lord. Receive our prayer, Lord, hear us. We pray for the human family and for our earthly home, for reconciliation in all corners of the earth, that people of all faiths might be allowed to worship safely, free from violence and persecution. We pray to the Lord. Receive our prayer, Lord, hear us. As the holy days of Christmas approach, we pray for all those for whom this time of year is a painful reminder of loss or disconnection. For those separated from their loved ones, most especially those whose families are divided, for the elderly in nursing homes, for the divorced and widowed, for the orphaned and the estranged. We pray that every member of God's holy family might feel his nearness and find in it a lasting comfort and companionship. We pray to the Lord. Receive our prayer, Lord, hear us. For the prophetic blessings that come to us in dreams and for the visionary spirit that encourages us to trust, to not be afraid, that we might be more attuned to the powerful mysteries of our faith, that we might be more active in sharing them with others, bearing with one another more thoughtfully and with increased generosity. We pray to the Lord. Receive our prayer, Lord, hear us. As Joseph did upon waking, and as Elizabeth said to Mary, blessed are you who believed. Lord God, help us to be better believers. Help us to be more trusting, more hopeful, more open to the ways we ourselves might bring Christ into the world that is so desperate for him. We pray to the Lord. Receive our prayer, Lord, hear us. For all those who celebrate the gift of life, in a special way for Rachel Maharas, that she and all those who celebrate their birthday today might be filled with good health and great good humor. We pray to the Lord. Receive our prayer, Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick, the suffering, for those who might die this day, for all those in need of healing. I invite you now to say their names aloud. Through the healing power of the Holy Spirit, may all those who are ill be brought to the fullness of health and well-being. We pray to the Lord. Receive our prayer, Lord, hear us. For the repose of the souls of Maria Amaral and Jerry Gray, may they and all of our departed loved ones rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Receive our prayer, Lord, hear us. Lord God, help us to remember that we are all a part of this great story. 
a story of redemption, of hope, of healing. May we say yes to that story and be a part of this salvation journey for ourselves and for those around us through Christ our Lord.
Be sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Praise in the glory of his name, our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels, archangels, thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Danny, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Thank you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Drawn to you, Lord, we are drawn to you, to the beauty of your presence in this place. Here for you, God, we are here for you, as the gifts we bring become a feast of grace. We are drawn to you. Drawn by the love that you have poured on us, we bring these gifts, works of our hands. You 
gather all we offer to yourself. Receive our prayer. Drawn to you, Lord, we are drawn to you. To the beauty of your presence in this place. Here for you, God, we are here for you. As the gifts we bring become a feast of grace, we are drawn to you. Drawn by the faith that you accept our gifts and sanctify. Solely by this bread and wine, receive our prayer. Drawn to you, Lord, we are drawn to you, to the beauty of your presence in this place. Here for you. God, we are here for you, as the gifts we bring become a feast of grace, we are drawn to you. Drawn by the table you have laid for us, the welcome feast. Your heart prepares The words now spoken that will make us one Receive our prayer Drawn to you, Lord, we are drawn to you To the beauty of your presence in this place here for you, Lord, we are here for you, as the gifts we bring become a feast of grace, we are drawn to you. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I hope that uh, everything is calm and bright in your households as you are preparing this week for Christmas. Uh, but if you're like me and uh, you're feeling a little bit jangled and there's just a lot going on, I'd like to invite you to come and be with us here in the church this coming Tuesday. Um, it's going to be the 20th of December. It'll be at 6 o'clock. We're going to have a quiet, calming evening prayer. It'll be about 30 minutes, 30 minutes starting at 6 o'clock. And it's just a chance to, to come and pray and be still and maybe remember what <laughs> what this is all about. Um, and if nobody really needs it, it's okay. Deacon Tom and I will be here and we will do the prayer because we need it. So, so it's at six o'clock for any of you who would like to come and have a little bit of an evening prayer um, in anticipation of Christmas, six o'clock.
Speaking of Christmas, um, those of you who are registered here in the parish, you'll be getting a Christmas card from us um, probably tomorrow, and it has the Christmas schedule in it. Um, it's unusual for us in the fact that this year Christmas is falling on Sunday. So our schedule is pretty simple. Um, on Christmas Eve, which is Saturday, we'll have a Mass at 4 o'clock. We call that our family Mass. And then we'll have a Mass at 8 p.m. That's sort of like a midnight Mass-style liturgy. And then on Christmas Day, we'll only have one celebration on Sunday. A week from today, we'll just have Mass at 11 o'clock. So 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve, 8 o'clock on Christmas Eve, and 11 o'clock on Christmas Day. I don't know that this is really the issue so much... Um, anymore, but it, it has always been historically that the four o'clock family mass is our busiest mass, and there can be an inclination where that mass is concerned to send in certain families to send a runner ahead to <laughs> reserve seats. This is what the church would call a cardinal sin. Yeah. No. no. No, we can't do that, everybody. It's, it's just, it's so inhospitable, you know. I mean, <laughs> for someone to come in at 4.30 or 4.15, or rather, excuse me, 3.15 or 3.30, and start laying jackets down, like six or seven or eight jackets, you know. And then people that do come early were like, sorry, there's no room uh, in the end. So basically, um, what I'm going to do, everybody, is I'm going to suggest something very shocking. Shocking to the Nativity of Our Lady, I know. Perhaps you could come early. You could come early, yeah. Deacon Tom and our musicians, they're going, to be, they're going to be making Christmas music. Come early. Come as a family or as a group and, and sort of enjoy singing some Christmas carols and, and steeping in the atmosphere of the environment of Christmas. So come early together. Uh, no reserve seats. We are going to have our overflow room all ready to go, um, which, by the way, we aren't going to be having hospitality today. And the reason for that is because um, they're restoring the, the ceiling in there after having installed the sprinkler head. So it's, it's a bit um, turned upside down right now. But we'll be looking forward to having um, hospitality for you again uh, the Sunday after Christmas. So look for that card in the mail and uh, looking forward to seeing all of you for Christmas. Um, it may seem strange to you for me to talk about Thanksgiving, but for those of you who came to Thanksgiving Mass, you may recall that we took up a collection and we said that a portion of that collection was going to go to the St. Vincent de Paul Society and another portion was going to go to the San Luis Obispo Food Bank. So right off the bat, this lady came up to me and she gave me a check for $1,000 for St. Vincent de Paul. So after I processed the collection, I decided to add $500 to that. And we actually gave, on behalf of all of you here at Nativity of Our Lady, we gave a check to our local St. Vincent de Paul for $1,500. And I think we have a, a picture of, yeah, no, that's, um, that's the wrong one. <laughs> There it is. There it is. That's uh, Bob Moroni. He's our parishioner who works for St. Vincent de Paul, and uh, that's us giving the check for $1,500. So then, this last week, Kayla and I went to the San Luis Obispo Food Bank, and we gave them a check, again, on behalf of all of you, for $1,000. And that's that check there. And... Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to do a tour of that facility. It's really an amazing, amazing facility. And um, they have this, this idea that they want to communicate about how much more effectively they can help people with a cash donation. So do you have that image of the, the tuna fish cans? So this is something that the, the head of the San Luis Obispo Food Bank did for us. So if you look here, he's saying that if you had $10 to spend on tuna, you can see that you can go to the store and you could buy those four little cans of tuna with $10. But $10 given to the food bank will enable them to buy that much because they can buy in bulk. So a cash donation to them really is just a multiplied donation, and it really, really expands. They're a amazingly well-run organization. I wish I ran my church as effectively and as efficiently as they run that food bank. It's quite extraordinary. My very first assignment as a priest was in um, Salinas, California, at a place called Sacred Heart. And we had a full um, grade school, K through, K through eight. And I was in charge of the prayer services with the school. And at one point during May, which is kind of traditionally thought of as the month for Mary, um, we were gonna do a special service. And so a friend of mine, who's an actress, she wrote this script um, it, with the idea that Mary would speak to, to us. So I've always wanted to do it. I've always wanted to do it here. And I thought, this is the year I'm going to get someone. But who can I get? Who can I get to do this? And I really couldn't imagine anyone doing it, right? 
And Deacon Tom, who is the chaplain at Mission College Prep, said, well, let me go to the, the theater department at Mission College Prep and see if there's, there's a teenage girl who would be willing to do this for us. And I thought, good luck. I mean, who is going to give up their whole weekend to do that for us, okay? So lo and behold, he goes over there, and this absolutely gorgeous girl says, I would love to come and do that for Nativity of Our Lady. And before you clap, I want you to know that this girl has the most beautiful name in all the world. Her name is Luna Bella. <laughs> Luna Bella. <laughs> And today is her 18th birthday. <laughs> so this is for us. So give him a big smile. You're so welcome. Thank you. If you're going to be traveling for Christmas, we certainly want to wish you and your families a, a, a wonderful Christmas holiday. I hope that wherever you are, you get a chance to go to church and give thanks to God. And, um, and we'll look forward to seeing you when you come back um, in the year 2023. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Come, come, Emmanuel. Son of God, appear. Heaven and earth rejoice. Salvation is drawing near. Salvation is drawing near. O oh, come, desire of nations, bind. In one the hearts of humankind Make all a sad division cease And be for us the King of Peace Come, come, Emmanuel Son of God appear Heaven and earth rejoice Salvation is drawing near Salvation is drawing near